ladies and gentlemen, now hosting the Rizzo cast, put your hands together for Steven Rizzotto. What is going on, everybody, and welcome. Happy New Year. First and foremost, this is our first episode of 2023. Can't wait to start doing this again during the new year. I'm super pumped. Uh, my name is Steven Rosotto. I cover the San Francisco Giants for SF Bay, and I am the host of RizzoCast, the podcast that features current and former uh, big league players, coaches, uh, fans, media, professional baseball players, and others who are regarded as some of the brightest minds around the game. Today's guest is BJ Boyd, a 29-year-old outfielder in the Los Angeles Angels organization. Boyd hit 337 with a 915 OPS uh, and nine homers in 70 games between AA and AAA. And it was enough for the Angels to re-sign him this offseason to a minor league contract. Incredibly enough, Boyd was almost not even in this position. He was a fourth round pick by the A's in 2012 and reached AAA until he walked away from baseball to go back to junior college in the Bay Area back in 2018 to, well, play college football. So now he's back in professional baseball and seemingly getting better each and every season. We talk about his journey and more coming up next on RizzoCast. This is episode 126, and let's get started. All right, we are here with BJ Boyd. BJ, how you doing? Welcome. Thanks for coming on, man. Happy New Year. Yes, yeah, so, oh man. Uh, yeah, man. Happy New Year to, to you as well. Um, shit, I'm looking for a big year this year. You know what I'm saying? Keep it going. Back into baseball. Got resigned with the Angels, so I'm excited, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let's talk about that here. Uh, Angels signed you to a, a minor league deal here on uh, a, f- a few weeks ago, actually. So, I mean, how excited are you to get back with that organization? Uh, I'm very excited, man. They blessed me last year, picking me up at an independent ball. Um, they sent me to low A, but they told me you're going to be everywhere. doesn't really matter, but you're going to get at bats. So that was pretty cool. And then they told me during the year, you keep putting up a great year, being a great teammate you know, you have a chance to get resigned. So that was the best thing for me. They kept their word. My coach really, uh, Dave Stapleton really put that on me. He's like, Hey man, just keep doing what you're doing every day and keep grinding. You know, nobody, you, everybody sees what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? I can, you can get mad every day, but at the end of the day, I still have a Jersey on and I'm playing, man. It's, it's a blessing to be playing in my league baseball. So. And your, your and, Instagram bio says the grind doesn't stop. What does that grind, mean to you? Grind. The grind. The grind doesn't stop. Uh, really, man, just it's almost like every day you have to keep pushing because you never know what could happen. So it's like for my biggest thing, I'm wearing a band right now. Shout out to Nick Consistent. And stay consistent every day, no matter what you do. When it comes to being a parent, when it comes to being on the field, if I got friendships, you know, just be consistent. And it's Whatever I do, I know if I'm consistent, then I'm going to be successful. Did you have a good New Year celebration? Like, what, what was the celebration like, Brandon, in 2023? Anything cool happen? Uh, uh, wait, in 2022, anything cool happen? Well, no, anything cool happened last night, bringing in the New Year. We're recording this actually oh, oh, on, uh, on, on January 1st, so we just uh, brought in the New Year. I think... Actually, this year was my first year really not doing anything. Uh, just staying at the house with my with the wife and the kids. I had a, one of my best friends come over, and we just kind of just chilled. He actually he worked, so he left early, so we didn't really get to watch the ball drop at midnight all together. But I got to see it with my fam, and you know it was a blessing to really think about. Hey, I'm really created a family. I have my own thing going on. You know, I mean that's the goal in life. I feel like just you know to create a family, have a foundation. You know and help my kids get to where I am and better. And I'm sure you're going to, you're going to continue, obviously your, your training regimen for the upcoming season. I want to, I want to get to that real quick because you know, a lot of people, maybe they take some time off after the season and they get back into it. uh, Or maybe they, they start right after the holidays to put it in full gear. Have you been training this entire time? Take me through kind of the regimen and what you do every day. Yeah, I mean, I've been on it ever since I stopped playing the first time and, you know, I've never stopped playing baseball. It's fun. I hit just for fun. It's it's something I love to do. You know, it's not like, oh, I don't think about it as a job. It's more like a hobby. You know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. You know, I'm not, I don't try to overdo it and kill myself. 
but I am going to work so I can play every single day. So, yeah, absolutely. And and let's get into your career here. I, I know growing up in, in the Palo Alto area, it's almost kind of like an area full of, of, of haves and have nots. And I read somewhere that your, your wife mentioned that you didn't grow up with a whole lot. So what was that experience like kind of trying to, to hustle your way to where you are now, I guess, take me through kind of that journey of, of you trying to make it out of Palo Alto with maybe not a whole lot of resources to help you. Uh, trying to make it out of Palo Alto. Well, obviously we know Palo Alto is a prestige place. People yeah. have a lot of money here and it kind of, well, I was growing up having no money and seeing my friends who had money. It was like they understood what they had, but they didn't really understood like what it, what they didn't have. Like everything was, um, uh, it, it was a clear road for them. Like I, I would always tell my best friend, like, "Hey, your reps don't really matter," because I know at the end of the day, you don't really love the game how I love the game, and I need this game to move forward. You don't really need this game. You're playing because you're just happy to be playing with me. You know what I'm saying? So it, it was one of those things. But it was also motivation, like, hey, one day I could change the dynamic to my family and have it so my kids don't have to go through what I had to go through. I feel like everything I went through to this day made me who I am. And either you respect me or you don't respect me. It is it is what it is. But at the end of the day, I'm not a bad person. I'm just trying to make sure that I can be successful in life. So that's that's really what it's about. And how important was it for, you know, sports as a, as a young kid you know playing sports we all view it as kind of an outlet uh how how much of it was an outlet for you growing up in palo alto and and getting a chance to kind of be distracted with sports and, and having that as your hobby uh for me sports honestly i look at like say say for this story i look at myself as a dominican in the usa a lot of people laugh at that but i knew that i wanted to play baseball I knew that you could always go back to school. And I, at the end of the day, if I didn't get a scholarship for school, how am I going to pay for school? I don't come for money. So mm. it's you either got to pick one and be about to be 100% committed to it or no. So like going through my career, I, I played out my first contract with the A's and I was kind of upset that I didn't get a chance to get to the big leagues because I put up numbers like everybody else did. I, I was a high draft pick. I was a fourth rounder. It was I did better than a lot of people that they put in front of me. And at the end of the day, that's where I learned politics. You know, Palo Alto High School wasn't my first high school. Uh, St. Francis was. And I went there strictly to play sports. And then when stuff, when I was better than certain people, but other people got to play, like, it, I started seeing it. And I was obviously ahead of my time when it comes to that because I don't grow up with a lot. So we're going to know that stuff is real right away. It's reality. So... Did you did you get to play with Jock Peterson at all at Palo Alto High School? Was or was uh, he older than you? Uh, Jock is two years older than me. I know him very well. Him and my cousin Kevin Brown are best friends. Um, I did not get to play with him, but I played with him like like Pop Warner, like Mighty Mites and stuff. I'm, I'm close with Jock. I just never got to play with him because I actually went to St. Francis my freshman year, mm -hmm. so I missed out on two years of baseball because I didn't even play baseball at St. Francis freshman or sophomore year. I didn't play baseball until junior year when I went back to Palo Alto High School. Wow. So did you, when you started playing and you picked it back up again, did you feel stale Ooh. at all? No, no, no. It, it wasn't even that. So that's why I'm going back to this Dominican in the USA. Mm -hmm. I never really went to school, but I just play baseball all the time. Yeah. Baseball was my school. Yeah. So I, out of high school, because I know you were faced with a, a dilemma, the, the same one that Kyler Murray faced, of course, getting drafted by the A's to play, uh, to play baseball or playing yeah. football. Uh, and you were obviously a standout in both sports. I guess looking back at it now, why did you choose baseball over football? I know that's kind of a loaded question, but uh, uh no, no, it, it's it's reality. Like I, like I said before, I trained to play baseball my whole life. I didn't go to school, and unfortunately, you have to go to school to play football. Mm. I didn't set myself up that way. I set myself up to play baseball. So that's the only reason why I chose baseball. Yeah, I regret it sometimes taking the baseball route because I haven't got to the big leagues yet. And I wouldn't say I really regret it. I just I haven't got to the, I haven't got my chance yet. So it's always like, dang, maybe if I would have did this route, I would have got my chance. So it's one of those things. And seeing Kyler Murray go to the NFL with that and getting drafted, it's like, dang, I could have done that. Yeah, and he's he's obviously playing really well. Uh 
just got hurt though with the Arizona Cardinals, but yeah, he's still definitely he's, he's killing still, it. Yeah, he's killing it, man. Like shit, I'd I'd love to get hurt right now in the big leagues, <laughs> <laughs> right? You want to get hurt in the minor leagues, but you rather get hurt in the big leagues and stuff like that. So it's you know that's and that's why I said the grind doesn't stop, man. I'm not gonna give up on what I'm doing. So when you were with the A's organization, I I was looking down some of your your numbers, and you mentioned that you you did put up numbers and you played with some really you know talented players. One of them was Matt Chapman. What do you remember from playing with with Matt Chapman? Obviously, now he's uh, with the Blue Jays and playing a really good third base. He's one of the great defensive third basemen. But what do you remember from playing with him in the minor leagues with the uh, with the A's organization? Uh, Matt Chapman, I, I remember a lot. I mean, his first year in pro ball was with me actually in Beloit, Wisconsin, and he was amazing from day one power arm can run obviously coming from Cal State Fullerton that's a man that's one of the top schools I remember when college baseball came out on Xbox everybody wanted to put, play with that team them in Texas so to hear hearing Matt Chapman come from Cal State Fullerton obviously I'm a California guy so I know about the school um he was amazing you know I heard on USA he can throw like 96 plus off the mound and then you can also see that at third base. I remember him in Nashville. We were in AAA together. And there was a foul ball hit down third base line. He caught the foul ball. And the guy that was on first base kind of got off too far. Didn't really expect him to throw this ball across the diamond. I had no clue he was going to throw the ball across the diamond as well. But he threw it so hard and so fast. And Matt Olson was the first baseman. He, he kind of like looked away like the ball was never coming. And last second just catches the ball. And it's a double play. And I was like, I was, that's, that's what's amazing about this kid. Yeah. Obviously an all-star now, of course. Um, oh, yeah. He, yeah. He's, just a he's the best. So it's not the best. Him and Arnado go back and forth. But I'm going to tell you Matt Chapman. <laughs> Matt Chapman over Arnado. But yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> I wouldn't argue there. Um, and uh, I mentioned how you mashed at the minor league level, and you're a guy who, you know, hits for a high average, uh, good back control. Describe kind of your hitting a lot more power now. Describe kind of your hitting style and and what what you're trying to do there at the plate. Well, I'm gonna tell you, I, I have like five favorite hitters. Uh, starting off, well, number one is Ichiro Suzuki, uh, one of my favorites. Uh, Tony Gwynn, Ricky Henderson, Barry Bonds, and King Griffey. If you, um, so basically how I look at it is if, if I get three out of 10, obviously that's successful. Now we know in school that is not successful at all. And, and that's one of the reasons why I chose baseball, because I knew that this game is failure. I'm, I'm also coming from failure, you know, it, it, and that's one of the things that why I love this game so much. It's the, it's the game of life, but my hidden philosophy is just get on base, try to score a run every time. That's how you win games. You don't win games off pitching. You win games off scoring a run. Yeah, the pitching might be good, but you still have to score to win no matter what it is. You know, it's just the game. So I look at if I have a high average, that means I'm getting on base and I'm probably going to win a lot of games if I'm in your lineup. My job is to try to win a game. Get on force, create something. Yeah, I can hit for power, but we know a lot of power guys don't have high averages. So you're basically out. So look at it. So say say a guy has 20 bombs, Right but he hits 220, 250 less almost. If you really think about it, he actually went to work only 20 days. There's 160 games, so where are the 140 other days? What, what did you do? You just showed up. So, like, what is that? What is that? How is that going to win you a World Series? And, like, people always, like, look at the Astros. I, 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 told, you, I told people last year the Astros are going to win for a long time. They play baseball. Look at Altuve, one of the smallest guys, hits home runs every now and then, but he still hit every single time. They all put There's the no ball size. in play. Yeah. Yeah, put the ball in play. Like we got Aaron Judge. Aaron Judge hit 62 home runs this year. Amazing. How many people do that consistently? It doesn't happen Not a lot. like that. Right? So when people are like, even let's talk about this. Aaron Judge, a California guy going to the Giants. Oh, we're excited about that. I actually didn't want that to happen. It would be cool, yeah, if Aaron Judge is at home with Giants. But then, right, the ballparks are different. He's hitting a lot of home runs in Yankee Stadium. Come on. It's a legacy. The Yankees are the America's team damn near. So why would you want to go away from that? You know, and why would saying? you want to walk away from being named captain? And like you mentioned, yeah, playing yeah. in the band box. You'd have a monument out there in the museum. Exactly. We're trying to get Aaron Judge a, a statue in New York. That's what I want to see. You might get one. Where's the B.J. Yeah. Boyd statue going to go? Hey, man, 
I better get one dollar out of. There you go. Um, so, I mean, you you mentioned that uh, you know guys with a lot of power maybe might not always hit for high average. Did you ever try out any of? Did a coach ever come up to you and say, "Hey, you know, you need to elevate more"? And if if it produces more strikeouts, then we're fine with that. But you know, let's try to because a lot of a lot of players oh. in baseball are doing that where they're trying to sacrifice power or they're trying to sacrifice you know bat to ball and strikeouts for power yeah i mean i'm gonna tell you the truth nobody's that good to do that except barry bonds and tony Gwynn. that's it and tony Gwynn didn't have a lot of home runs but when i was with the a's i actually one year double a i hit like 320 something and i got back to spring training the next year they were like but you had the worst launch angle and i was like what does that have to do with anything you know what I'm saying? I'm the, I'm the MVP of the, the, the league, whatever. And I hit 323. I should have been moved up when I was hitting 295. As a matter of fact, I should have been moved up hitting 270 because now I'm seeing guys that are getting moved up hitting 220, 230. And it's like, whoa, I'm hitting almost 100 plus more than that. And I'm not even moving anywhere. So it, it was one of those things like – I understand the analytics and all this stuff. Like you can hit the ball. A guy has 120 exit velo, but he hit the ball to second base. You're still out. It doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? My my goal is to hit. If you want to think about exit velo, I want to hit around 85 to 90 to 95 every time. Consistent getting the hit because I know by 85 with a good launch angle, yeah, it might go out. It depends where I'm playing at. Yeah, you know, so all that stuff plays. And uh, it was funny because Barry Bonds actually had a quote, and I thought this sums it up because like everybody's looking at OPS, so like percentage on base. And Barry Bonds had a quote, and he said, "I've never seen you don't ever see career three hundred hitters get released." So um, that that's what he said in regards yep. to to um, hitting his hitting philosophy. Because I mean, a guy like Barry Bonds hit for a ton of power, but he also hit three hundred, you know, every year. So. Um, Every time you can do both. There's room to do both. I think for sure. Um, now continuing on with your, your tenure with Oakland real quick, and we'll kind of put a bow on it here. What didn't work out with them? Was it just kind of like the fact that you, you weren't moving anywhere. There was no path to go. They were taking other guys who maybe I, were putting heard, up less I've numbers. Heard, I've heard so many different stories from playing with the organization and then being out for baseball for three years obviously creating the friends with certain staff members that are there and not there more hearing different stories about the whole bunch of stuff. And I really don't know what happened. I would have, you would have thought that a Palo Alto kid, Bay area kid is going to get an opportunity with the Oakland A's. Um, My mentor, Ricky Henderson for seven years, you know, he was, he would kind of like throw hints out like, man, they ain't really feeling you like that. But I'm seeing the guys who they're feeling. They're giving, like, let's just say I got drafted for 300K in the fourth round. The next year, draft pick, the fourth rounder got more money than me. How does that happen? So as I'm seeing that, I'm telling you, oh, their value of me is not even high. But that also goes back to, hey, I wasn't that much. I wasn't fortunate growing up like that. So my parents can't vouch for millions of dollars. Oh, you have to give my son millions because he can just go to college. No, they already knew what they were getting. You know, they kind of took advantage. And that's the stuff that I'm learning now. And this is like, well, this is why I do coaching. This is why I do a lot of things in the off season because I see how the game can treat you. you Was know, it? I, yeah. You go ahead. Finish that thought. I, I mean, I've, I've been blessed to get back into the game, taking three seasons off, you know, but that, that just tells you, like, I'm not a bad person. That's not my character. Cause I know before the angels got me, they were doing background checks on me. Like, what the heck? What happened with this kid? Like, what? Like, what's happening? I mean, my friends were calling me that I played with. They're like, "Hey, man, they keep asking, how are you as a teammate and stuff?" And I was like, "Okay, well, tell them the truth." And I ended up oh. getting picked up. They, they they told them the truth. So it was like, man, like, I don't harm anybody. I don't do anything. I'm just me. I come from Palo Alto. I, I don't get in trouble. <laughs> So it's one of those. Things. Maybe they were thinking like, "Oh, this guy's putting up a lot of numbers in the minor leagues. Like, why hasn't he been up before? Is there something wrong?" <laughs> so yeah, there's something wrong exactly. And that's what's that's the scary part. And like I always hear the, if you're good, they're gonna find you. Which hey, they're, they're they're looking at me. And it's one of those things. Like when I was in the Double A All Star game, a lot of people that were in the All Star game are in the big leagues. And it's like, dude, I was the MVP of this game. How did I not get my shot? I should have been in it. I should have been there that year. Before the season was up, he's got a chance, you know, and then not even to get a big league invite the next year. There's a lot of stuff to show me the 
how the game is. Yeah, no doubt. And and this is where things get interesting for you. I mean, you're 20, 26 years old, just finishing a solid year in double A with the A's. And you decide to head back to junior college to play football at a, a Foothill College in Los Gatos. Why did that feel like the, the right move for you to go and uh, become the running well, back of that, that team? I was at CSM and obviously CSM is a top school. They, they actually just won this year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And CSM had a they had a lot of rules, which I respect it. It was cool. It was great. It was actually if you were a kid with no direction, it was a perfect place for you. But I already kind of understood what was going on and what I needed to do to move on. And for me, it was knocking out these classes because I was already on my way. If I would have chose football out of high school, I just needed to go to school. I never really went to school, so I couldn't really get my school done fast enough for me to go D1. I knew that I always could always play, so I went the JUCO route. Um, CSM had too many rules, so I told the coach, hey, I love you. Thank you for all the stuff you did, but I have to go here because there's too many rules. Um, so I went to Foothill, it was closer to home. My actually my old high school football coach went to Foothill named Tony Kelly, and he helped me get into the school. So I actually wore number nine for him, and that was my number as well. I said, like, Hey, I'm gonna keep this thing going on. Got to Foothill, a guy named Brandon Younger, uh, and Kelly Edwards, man, they really took me in under their wing and let me be me. They knew I had kids, they knew that you know, they knew I had to be a dad at the end of the day. So what I did was just basically knock out all my schoolwork and just Go to practice every single day. Did you feel like that kind of redeemed, you know, maybe not focusing on school when you were in high school? Do you felt kind uh, of fulfilled in that way that you got to yeah, do it later yeah. on? Yeah, I always knew I could do school. It was just at the end of the day, let's keep it real. In real life, you don't need school like that. You need people to know. You need to understand people, know people, talk to people. Yeah, school can help you if you're, again, on that prestige, you're making a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So that goes back to the signing bonus and all this stuff. But at the end of the day, real reality, you just got to be a good person and meet people and have a work ethic in life. That's it. This guy's getting hired right now with no degrees. There's people getting hired with no degrees. Some people with no degrees are making more money than people with degrees. You know, it just goes back and forth. It's a tit for tat. Now, I'm not saying don't go to school because that's a, you need school. You know, it's just telling you at the time for baseball, that has nothing to do. It's baseball. School can wait. So yeah. that's why, that's why I would say that. And it's funny because I, I talk about this a lot on, with, you know, with other players and with other people that have gone the route. But, you know, for me, I'm a I'm a Skyline alumni. I went to Skyline for two years. I'm at SF State now. How underrated is Juco? Because all these kids, like especially kids my age that I play baseball with, they're all saying, you know, four year, four year, four year. And they go to a four year and they don't play. So how Look, underrated? It's such an underrated path Juco, that a lot of kids I, I, take. Right now, I'm fighting that right now, talking to kids and telling them and getting them to understand. I'm like, dude, people get drafted out of Juco. Like this year with the Angels, when I saw these new draft picks come in, I was like, hey, what school did you go to? He told me a school I never heard about it because I was, obviously he was like, dude, it's a Juco. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. I never even heard of that. The next dude I would ask, he's like, oh, I went to a D2. Oh, I came out of Juco. Then you see these guys, there's like four guys, pitchers. That went to Oklahoma State, uh, that's the one to Texas, and that's only so many guys getting picked on the on the team. Like I, I heard in the last couple of years, USC had, had a whole team not get drafted in two years, not one player. So how how does that work? So it's like JUCO is it's it's a great place for people who need more time in school or who can't afford school. You know, JUCO is a place where you can you know if you're good, they're gonna find you. No one's going to miss a guy throwing 95 in Juco. The first thing they're going to say is, how did he not get out? How did he not get an offer? Then you go down the line, oh, he couldn't really afford this. He didn't have the best upbringing. He wasn't really good in school. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's not people are bad in school. It's just people don't have the patience to help people that don't learn as fast. Yeah. Like you might, I can teach you something. I might tell you a different way and you understand it right then and there. Now, there's only one way in school that they teach. So if I don't know that curriculum that way, oh, then I'm toast. I'm going to get left behind. And all they, all they really need is somebody who can explain it differently or, you know, stuff like that. And as kind of the elder statesman on that, that Owls football team, did you, did you feel like you needed to take, a, you know, a leadership position with that team? Do you feel like, you know, maybe some of the guys looked up to you? Uh, I didn't need to be a leader. Some of the guys that were there already knew that they were actually coming from the same place I came from mm-hmm. in the same kind of situation. So by any means, that's what I said. The grind doesn't stop. 
they if they see me doing it, the grind doesn't stop. They know shit. If he's doing this, man, I, I really got to be on it. Yeah. Like it, it, it was one of those things. It was like, man, just follow in line. I don't need to tell you anything. You see it. And it was an unbelievable team too, huh? Yeah, we, we were really good. Everybody's like, oh, it's a fluke. No, actually everybody on that team was already really good. They just didn't get an opportunity. If if COVID didn't happen, like where would you be right now? Like would you, like what would, like if, uh, if the pandemic like didn't halt COVID, things? If the pandemic did not happen, I think that I would have been at Cal Berkeley playing football. Oh, interesting. Yes, interesting. I would have been there. Uh, Cal was my first choice. Um, they, they, I caught interest in me and they were almost, I would say I needed a, basically I was talking to them as a freshman. I needed another year to play. So I was basically going to not play that sophomore year and just go straight to school just to knock out all my schoolwork, get everything done, focus on training, getting back to what I need. Cause I already knew you need a highlight tape. So literally what I was doing in Juco football, I would try to score as fast as I can and take myself out. Because you got to think about, I'm not going to go kill myself running guys over, trying to get hurt. No, I'm going to play this the smart way because I just need highlights. Yeah. Yeah, get the, get the reps so on how, the hoodoo. Yeah, get the reps, get the nice highlights. I didn't need to do too much to get where I needed to be. I already understood what this is. All I needed was a walk-on offer because the A's paid for my schooling when I signed out of high school. So that was the best thing about my contract. Once I went back to school, I got a little bit of money to go to class and finish my homework. You know, so that was a blessing. But yeah, I really think that I would have been at um Cal Berkeley. Wow, interesting. And and the pandemic also kind of changed you personally because you know, you got married, you had a few kids. I mean, what's the family life like in, oh, in parenthood well, and all that? It's amazing, you know. My wife's always on me, you know, that's just what it comes with, you know. I feel like I love her for that. If if my wife wasn't yelling at me and getting on me, I kind of be like, Oh, this is boring. But I, I like that. You know, it reminds me of my mom always getting on me. Embrace so, the grind. <laughs> yeah, embrace the grind. Yeah, it's just it, exactly. It's it, it motivates me. It pushes me. You know, the the worst part is, is when I leave for too long. You know, the, when my daughter, like when I first got home, my daughter would always ask me, "Are you leaving?" And it'd be like, "I'm literally just getting up to go get some water or something." And she's like, "Are you leaving?" And it's like, "Damn!" Like you don't really feel that when you're away, but you feel it because they're like they're not there. Like they're everything. I sleep with my daughter every night. It's one of those things. So, yeah, that, that's the that's the biggest part that that sucks. And of course, uh, you know, we're almost done here. But to wrap it up, you know, you're back with the Angels and you're back in baseball. More importantly, um, did did you? And I, I mentioned this with you know earlier when we talked about you know playing, starting playing in your junior year in high school. Did you worry about you know kind of your skills being a little stale when you got back to baseball? Or were you kind of at it? every day no no I, I know I know that all the work and time I put into this game I knew that I'm not gonna miss nothing I, I'm the same person as when I was playing it's the same game I don't look at it like that it's see the ball hit the ball mm -hmm. it's if you're gonna take all this information because there's a lot of guys who teach that don't even have the resume to be teaching but they teach they get these jobs so it's the same I look at it same thing as everything it's it's reality it is what it is like this year with the with the Angels, I had a my hitting coach Ryan Sebra, cool dude. And first thing he kind of told me, he was like, "Dude, you got more abs than me in the minor league." What I'm gonna tell you? And from that, I just laughed, and it was like, "Yeah, okay." So he's a guy that understands. Like, hey, now he actually was a blessing for him because he actually made it open up for me to hey speak up more, talk to your teammates, get to know people. And I wasn't really like that with the A's. I feel like I was kind of quiet. The guys that I was close to, they knew me. But when it came to like talking to coaches and stuff, like I would always just put my head down and be like, yes, sir. So I, one year I actually had a bad year. Uh, I hit 226 in uh, Boyd, Wisconsin. And all I did was listen the whole year. And I would literally go up there not feeling like myself in the box. And I'd be like, you know what? They want me to do it. So I'm going to try it as long as possible. And then it got to a point I looked at it and I was like, well, this, this is my career. I'm going to go out my way. And then from there, it's it's been consistent the, the rest of the time because I know at the end of the day if I'm I've seen so many guys ahead of me get released off they like, ah, don't listen to people don't listen to them nobody's gonna feel what you feel no matter what they tell you so it, everything is a feeling it's rhythm you know all that when you're hitting yeah you, you might try to copy somebody's swing but that's still not you 
still not your swing. Everybody has their own way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, I mean, I think it's cool that you kind of found a home with the Angels organization here and they and they brought you back. Uh, what are your kind of goals for 2023? I think I have the big one in mind. You know, obviously make it to the big leagues. But do you have any? <laughs> yeah, any you, know, you know the goal? Any certain uh, yeah. goals? Yeah. Uh, certain goals just to, you know, play well every day, you know. Do something every day. Make sure that my name is in those stat lines every day. Even if it's still in somebody's run, um, scoring a run, uh, moving the guy over, you know, when trying to win a ball game. Yeah, I want to hit home runs. Yeah, I, who doesn't want to hit a home run every time? Let's keep it real. It doesn't happen every time. Or everybody be having 400 home runs or 400 ABs on the season. It just doesn't happen. Like, like the year I had in double A with the Twins when I hit 16 home runs. I didn't go out there trying to hit home runs. Those were just 16 lucky pitches that I hit hard over the fence. You know what I'm saying? They're talking about these 16 home runs, but what happened to the other 96 at-bats that I got hits on too? You know, I could still score from first base, ball down the line, a ball in the gap. So right there, it's like, you know, a lot of people say second base is scoring position, but I feel like for the fast guys, it should be first base as well. So... Yeah, absolutely. That's a good point. Well, BJ, man, I appreciate the time. This is a lot of fun to uh, to to chat with you, and uh, you know, best of luck to you moving forward. And and now that you've been on the podcast, you'll be uh kind of on our our rooting. Uh, you're you're in the Rizzo Cast podcast family, so so we'll be rooting for you. Appreciate that. And of course, uh, uh, yeah, your brother's there. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go get him in just a second once we uh once we wrap this up here. But I just want to plug you real quick because you know you got a great Instagram page. Go check it out. The grind doesn't stop at Bossman Boyd on Instagram. Uh, go check him out. He's always posting some good stuff. Uh, post uh, and then we're posting some good stuff too on our uh, channels on Instagram, Twitter at RizzoCast. Go follow. Go check out the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you find your podcast. Thank you guys for listening and have a good day.